Hello everybody and uh, in this uh, video actually uh, we will learn how we can create easily um, a simple library. Uh, so that's a project I had before we just close that one. It will be actually a library for open AI and that library will be uh, written in PHP and we are also going to uh, use Gozol. Um, <laughs> uh, somehow it doesn't get activated. I will use, um, oh, maybe, I think I have an issue with my PHP Storm. I will use um, Visual Studio for now. We are going to create a new project. And the name, I will just go CD in code. And the name of the project will be um, Open OpenAI Library. That will be the name of the project. So we can just go inside. And here, the first thing we we'll do is to um, well to initiate a composer package composer. So you can type composer in it. The name of the package for me to be um, ph7 slash and openai um, <laughs> I do openai sdk perfect and then a uh, description um, easy um, easy um, easy Uh, so basically, it's a layer. It helps to a yeah, easy SDK for open for using um, open AI with PHP. So obviously, open AI is uh, this library. Um, open AI. This one, it's really good uh, to me. It's a uh, it's just an amazing library. Uh, it's just an amazing API. It's not a library. It's an API. They have now GPT-3, and um, basically you can create a search engine so quickly. You can search for suggestions for uh, content uh, generators. So like GTP-3, oops, content generator. It's like a human who um, wrote some some um some some text basically it's really um it's just amazing uh yeah open ai is a really good library minimum stability uh, i will leave it blank uh it's a library so we we'll type library uh because uh, that our library will be included in another library and uh, the license it will be mit and um not for now. I mean, actually, I will, but I will uh, install it later on. Uh, yes, that one. Yes. Mm, perfect. And that's it. So now I will open actually the composer.json. That's already our first file of our project. I will initiate as well a git. So we do a git in it. And here, uh, actually, I will use um, uppercase. Perfect. I don't even need the slash here. Um, and now, actually, I will go to packages because I want to use um, Gozol actually. So, Gozol HTTP, that's the one, and I will install that one here. Beautiful, amazing. I will see my project that I have. Um, a simple project, skeleton project here. I have actually some already written uh, files I did before for Kitikno, PHP unit, and XML. I will use them. 
that we had this. I will show you what's inside actually. Um, again, I uh, actually I will open them with uh, in the project. I will open Visual Studio. Here it is, and here you see Git Ignore. Um, that we don't want uh, env, we want have env package.log. Uh, actually, no, um, because it's, um, it's a PHP project, so um, we can do like uh, dependencies is vendor and um, composer dot um, mm -hmm, it's composer dot log. Um, yes, yeah, composer dot log. We don't want to commit it for now. Uh, that's just the log file. This one is about the ID. Perfect. Uh, what is um, unit test? Maybe just test. I will ignore um, because that one we have the dist. Uh, PHP unit dot XML dot this. I want to ignore just PHP unit dot XML. And um, let's say that yeah, I would say that's it for now. And that's uh, yeah, perfect. Um, actually, it's a convention as well. We you don't need to mention the slash. I will I will show you back in the project here. I mentioned the slash. Actually, I could do the same for the .id because it's a folder. Um, however, you don't need it. It's like you, um, in the Unix Linux system, uh, Unix style architecture, a file and a folder is actually the same. And with a slash or not a slash, it's actually the same for the system. So it will be ignored as well. But for us, we, we will still mention the slash. So at least we know this is a folder, this is a file name, a file, yes. Um, so now we have Gozol and I will also um, install PHP unit. So I can do require a uh, composer, sorry, composer require PHP unit slash PHP unit. However, I want to have it as dev dependency. So I use the dev flag as you can see. And uh, it will be added in Composer really soon. I can also create here already a file which will be um, open AI. Or maybe client actually, it will be client.php. So in um, here, open SDK, open actually the namespace. To be open AI just yes uh, and here um, in our file here I will just have um, namespace so in the count.php it will be ph7 that's my um, my main namespace like my vendor name space and then to be open AI then obviously I want to declare the street type. I don't know if I can um, street type. Sometimes oh, it, does, it doesn't auto compete. So with PHP, um, PHP street type. I always forget the exact name. I don't want to um, to make a typo. Uh, but it's um, yeah, it's actually this declare street types like this beautiful uh, here we have a class and so the name will be client beautiful and i will have first a uh, constructor which will be public public function construct and uh, yes that's already it and here I will have a private hmm, I will see with Gozol how we we'll do because it will be like a private client attribute um, and 
we might have also yeah, obviously a constant to store the um, OpenAI UI. I will add it here later. So it will be like um, open AI UI. It will be probably private actually. And then it will be also another private constant which will be the version, um, API version. And that there to be probably one point. I don't know yet, I have to check in the OpenAI documentation uh, but we'll check that later on i will create a login so you can actually go to get started it will be beta yes beta dot uh, openai.com sign up and you can create an account for me i have already an account which is nice so we are actually uh, for the constants which might we might change the constants later on to a enum uh, since PHP 8.1, you can use enum. Um, it's like actually a uh, TypeScript if you are familiar with, or with a lot of different with a, um, a lot of different languages who are already offering enum, and now PHP does it as well. Oh, sorry, that's my alarm. And um, here for the constant so far for now, we we keep the constant, and we are just changing. So the value will be. HTTPS, uh, HTTPS um, for slash API, and the version will be actually V1. Uh, that will be the default um, value. Uh, V1 is for the version of the API. Okay, so here now with the uh, API, what I'm thinking of is to use, uh, first of all, yeah, let's do in composer of the JSON, I um, the minimum PHP version, it will be actually um, PHP PHP seven uh, eight point one. Let's say so. Uh, you can actually check um, eight point one. Um, what? How do you do here for the require? It's actually like this. Um, perfect. So we live like this because we might use the latest uh, features from PHP. Here, I believe we are going to use um, to actually in the parameter we might use we might do provider. So um, let's create a new interface an interface actually um and the name will be provider beautiful it will be an interface maybe provide the ball usually it's nice to have an adjective name for interfaces um provide i don't i'm not really sure i'm not exactly show for the name um, for the interface okay so apparently looking on my phone is a uh, list to provide the ball like this this kind of adjective and here um, because we will use the strategy pattern so we are going to use an interface when we are injecting the provider and the provider will be actually open ai here i will call it um well, provider um i will use the feature from php 8 which will be um for the property so the current actually it will be like um protected i will now turn off my phone so it will be protected Beautiful um, provider, that's the name of the type. Uh, I mean, it's the data type and um, provider. Um, perfect. And uh, actually, it's not provider, it's provide the ball we said. Beautiful. So that's a feature uh, with PHP 8. And so we don't have to initiate the, the attribute like, like this, for instance. Um, provider equals um, provider and here 
and we don't have to mention private provider you see we don't have to do that because we can do it directly here in this level in that level of the controller and now i will have a new folder and the name will be um provider actually i will move that one inside and the namespace will be actually will definitely be provider and i will just check if my um for the auto load open i open ai that looks good open ai yes beautiful what else i will use i will create a new class and the name of the class will be open IA and that will be AI, sorry, open AI. I don't know why I sometimes I get confused. I say open IA or even open API because I'm so used to open API, but no, I mean open uh, AI. So here to be um, our class, we are going to use Gozol, we could we could use a uh, CURL, but I think Gozol will be fine. So now, actually, uh, I just noticed first our interface here for our strategy pattern. It doesn't match with the same name. It's provider the name, and here the interface. Like what we said, we are going, we are using a adjective because for interfaces, it's a good practice to use um, adjective, adjectives. And I'm going to rename it, to rename it as well with provide the ball like this. Beautiful. So the name now is matching. On the current, um, so on the current also we are going to change with the interface name, providable, and I'm going to import the interface. So the interface is actually in provider folder. So we have the provider namespace and then the name of the interface and, um, this one, open API URL and API version. Actually, I'm going to you to move them to our open AI class. So I will delete them. And um, after we create here a different function, but let's first go to open AI. And here in open AI first, we are going to use uh, the, um, um, the really interesting concept actually uh, in PHP 8, we can use a, what's the name? Promotion promoted um, constructor, so you don't have to use the properties in the class. And when you use the um, the promoted property constructor, it goes like this. This is for the count, and um, actually it will it will use console. So first I will create. Uh, no, wait. I won't create a function creep, maybe. Um, so client, client here is actually from Gozol. Here is from the constructor. So now we have a client property in the class. Uh, thanks to the promoted property. So we don't have to mention it here. Um, and I'm going because we need also the um, the private key of open AI and for doing that um, for the private key of open AI I'm going to um, actually we remove this one from the query uh, maybe it will be get because in uh, with Gozol when we return when you will return the response uh, the response from query it will be response interface uh, so here we first add the headers um, the, the headers we are going to send to open ai and first we are so the headers will be authorizations 
and that one, the BR token will be the open AI private key token you will be able to get in your account, I mean, from your account. So when you go to your account, you can actually get that to one um, from here. So once you create your account there. And um, let me just, that will be the private key to be a string. And um, here we'll add a slash because I will add the API version constant just next to OpenAI. After we'll have a prefix as well, uh, which we'll create just after. And accept will be actually the content type. So it will be application JSON, application slash JSON, that will be the content type. It's nice always to store it in a constant and not to hardcore the value. And um, with Gozo, so you have request, first is the method, and first is a get for now. Then it will be the full URL path, and then you send the headers. And from there, you will, we will return the, the request, so it will be response interface. And here actually, you see before, I was initiating directly the client um, object to client variable, um, but I won't initiate, I won't create the object here. I will actually do inside of the constructor still. Although I could do it with this kind of syntax, with a promoted property, uh, you can also initiate values, of course, but I think it's cleaner and more readable to do it inside of the constructor body and not in the signature. So the, the signature is actually the parameters, the arguments of the constructor. Uh, we usually, we call a signature of a function, um, the types, the, the arguments, and what the function returns. That's, that's the signature. Um, and yes, actually it will return an exception. I want, uh, when you use PHP doc, I, in my case, I won't uh, leave, I won't keep the return uh, tag because we have it already here, thanks to PHP 7. So uh, thanks to the return types uh, introduced in PHP 7. So I'm just going to mention uh, what the function throws because at the moment, this is not possible to mention in it in the signature of the function. Again, here the signature is private, the function is get, there's no argument, and what it returns is response interface. Uh, beautiful, so that looks already much better. Um, I might also add a constant for the get. Um, get HTTP method. This could be moved to a different class, or maybe to a enum for the moment to keep our class simple and easy to be understood. We are doing this way, um, and I can even actually improve a little bit the indentation by going to the second line. So at least the line length is shorter, as you can see now, it's a bit better. Beautiful. Uh, so we have this v1. I will also, uh, no, I won't add a slash for now. Um, I might have a prefix though, but for the moment we can leave like this and open AI. It implements obviously provide, um, providable. And here we are going to create a function, a public function get because everything that Everything that implements um, providable interface, we need this. Um, we need to. Um, we need to. Um, so they have actually like for us OpenAI. We must decorate. We must um, create the body of the get. Uh, we must implement. Sorry, we must implement the get function. So when we, when you implement providable, you have to, um, 
to implement also the get definition. Um, and for us, it's get, and it has to be public because it's part of the interface. So it doesn't make sense to be private. Actually, PHP even doesn't allow you to uh, to have a function private because it has to be um, to be public at least. Or even I think protected. Can you do it protected? No, apparently not either. It has to be because it's an interface. So it doesn't really make sense. Um, if if it's in an inter if you mention the function names in an interface. It's, it's meant to be used by other devs, so that's why it has to be public. Finally, here uh, we are going to use our provider, and it will be provider, and then you can use the get. And that will be already the main activity. Response equals get. So we are already, um, that's already a good start. In git attributes, so far I added to this. Git attributes because we don't want that one to be available on our dist um, distribution builds. Uh, the same for git ignore, php unit.xml.dist. Um, what else you could have? You, you can actually add also test support um, because we don't want uh, the test uh, the test folders to uh, to be there when someone install our package because it's pointless. It's only used for um, testing purposes. So yes, this is already a nice um, a nice chunk we have already done. By the way, here in the constructor, since we use the promoted property in the constructor, we don't need this. We can directly initiate that one here. It's not really important. You don't have to do that, but um, yeah, you can do it. Definitely you can. And even a better practice, we can that client. So we could use actually a, a library, like another library than Gozol. So the best way will be to create a new interface for the client. So maybe in the future, we won't use Gozol, but we'll use another library to fetch the open AI um, API. So the first thing I would suggest you to do is to create a new interface and the interface will be hmm, client table client table is not a really good name so let's do gozol hmm yeah this is uh it's a bit hard uh, http Mm, HTTP client. I have no idea actually. Let's do client for now for the name of the interface. So I will actually I will create a new folder in the source src folder. Names are so hard sometimes to. It's so hard to find a good name. Obviously, client table. It doesn't make sense. That's too weird. Okay, for interfaces, it's nice to have an adjective. But it has to make sense as well. So let's do current for now. And let's do interface. Beautiful. Uh, that one. So now um, <laughs> I will import this one. I will remove it and I will import instead. Um, my namespace HTTP client. Beautiful. Uh, perfect. And from there, from my interface, I will see what I will use. 
Mm, it's a bit hard. Maybe HTTP provider vendors. Hmm. I'm not too sure. Vendors is not a really good name. Let's go back to our main current class. We have too many current classes. That's a problem. Um, open AI. Hmm. Um, and especially when we test as well, we want to be able to change this Gozo account maybe to another one. So, you know, maybe now to keep it simple, we can, hmm, we can leave it as it is for now. Let's not make it more compli complicated than it's supposed to be. Sometimes we over engineer. We do the over engineering, which means to make a software more complicated than, than it's supposed to be. So let's leave like this for now. We have the private keys, so the private keys from there. So now here I would like to improve a little bit the readability of our class. I will use printf in our case to format a little bit nicer with a string here and I will use like this so because our private key will be a string I will just do like that. Perfect. Um, private key I was wondering maybe we can use a, a get value pattern. I don't know if you know that one. It's a, it's a nice pattern. Um, get value object pattern. It's the name, I think it's value object actually. Uh, value object. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm not sure if you see on my phone, but value object. So we have value object is a really simple pattern. So we have a class and we have um, a method usually called get value or as value, as string could be as well to retrieve the value. We can use it um, value object for to get the um, private key. I will create then a new, a new class and the name will be private key. So inside of it, I will have a constructor first, a public constructor. Oh, I need obviously two underscore, um, beautiful. And here, uh, so, the name will be actually the same as this. And inside of it, inside of the constructor, we'll just check if, if it's not a string. So first, uh, I will create a check function. Um, is valid. Is valid will return a boolean. So we are actually going to declare street type here because we are going to use the street type. We want PHP to complain if the type is not valid. Oh, my internet was still on. Um, so here I will, uh, the parameter will be, um, oh yeah, if I check if it's not empty, well, I will do like this, can be null and um, key. And so it will be, it will return empty. Uh, for the key to be valid, it has, it cannot be empty and has to be a string. Beautiful. This looks good. And so if it's not the case here, if it's not oops, if it's not valid, uh, we are going to um, to throw an exception. So 
So scroll new. Oops, I don't know why there's an E. <laughs> and to be invalid argument exception. And here we can say um, the the key. And there we can mention the key is invalid. Beautiful. So we can use printf um, to have the key, uh, private key, perfect. Um, beautiful. So we can just do this. We can just say the key is invalid. Um, or even because if this one is empty, private, oh no, it has to be a string we want. Um, yeah, let's do like that. Here, what's in, uh, we have a syntax error. Let's see what's the problem there. Uh, this one, something must be missing. Um, oh, and here, I just want to use this one. Um, let's see what is, oh, um, from my son. Okay, that's funny. Private function is valid. String. Hmm. Um, it's private function is valid. Oh, I think I think here was the problem with the syntax. Beautiful. Actually, my bad. It's um, I'm so used to TypeScript, and so that's why the question mark was after. But it has to be before here. So we do this private key, and that's actually a. Oh, we haven't finished actually. Then uh, for the value object pattern, we need public function get value, and the um, the type will be string, the return type. And it will just return um, the private key like this. Beautiful. And you know, some people do a string. It's also valid. Perfect is valid. Um, missing function return type declaration. Oh yes, I forgot. Uh, Boolean. Perfect. Beautiful. So that's our class. Now I can use private key in our um, here, um, so that will be the new type, exactly here, and uh, so it will be, um, yeah, we can keep the same name, but here it will be get value instead, beautiful. So we are sure that the, the key has always a valid value because otherwise we will receive the exception, as you can see, if it's not valid. Um, now we do the request, beautiful. What else can we improve here? Open, uh, and so I use this. That sounds correct, yes. Something else we can uh, improve is the client. So actually, I will just do an alias here and I will do, uh, well, gozol client because otherwise client might be a little bit confusing. So we do like this. Perfect. Now, going to work on uh, the client to do the um, several requests and so on. So we have a function which will be um, public function search, search probably. Let's see, after we might create an interface and we we'll see, I will have the type will be string and it will be engine. And here I will probably, I will do um, returning taking actually provider first then get um so get as you can see 
it's from we are taking that one um and from there um or actually get huh that's interesting we might do private and initialize um we might do this actually instead perfect uh initialize and uh, why is company oh yeah that's that's okay actually and so here we are about to use get still so we are going to use the same as here so we oh request sorry i don't know if gozol has normally it has been so long i haven't used it request let's use request do they have get or no, or post apparently not. So we are going to use request. Um, so um, get here, and then it will be. Um, hmm, that's interesting. I'm not sure how we can, because we might have to use the same URL. You see, I think our problem might be from the client. We might do this instead. Um, client, we do the. In, um, we will assign. We will initiate. Um, initiate the. Um, we will create the object here actually. In this level because um, normally you have from gozol let's see for the constructor can we mention uh, base ui yes base ui and um, headers do we have headers so that's actually the doc normally yes let's try to do this and here to be self um open it a url and we'll have the header uh, this and uh, and that's it actually so we won't have this one at all it will be yes it will be exactly like this um and then Semicolon. Uh, here it's complaining uh, property only written but never uh, read. Yes, for now. Um, <laughs> this. We'll see after how we'll continue. But at least now, I believe in the current, we can easily then do. Uh, get and then here to be like um, probably engines and then it to be uh, string for the engine and then it to be search probably like this headers Mm, because we need the request. Huh. Uh, it becomes an interesting um, problem. We might still do public function. Um, let's do get a client. That makes more sense. And so it will return um, response interface, I think. And here it will be return this client. This one should work, however. Uh, return is that, but oh, yeah, gozo. Hmm. So um, 
console client beautiful let's do like this and this one we can use it here and so normally we should be able to mm -hmm, provider doing something like that and now we can use uh, the same for the different functionalities such as um classification um normally i think it's a s um and then it will return um again we can return this so i think here it will return interface a uh, response interface perfect beautiful and i will copy paste but or oh, actually here i forgot to use printf to do it to be engine beautiful and i have the street types um enabled so that's nice and here um it should be a post i believe i will see after on the documentation um and now it will be classifications um let's see for the spelling yes it's the same beautiful i just noticed i missed a parenthesis here so we need the parenthesis to close uh, for sprintf now i don't have errors anymore perfect and you see pretty much this um it's pretty much all actually so what we want to do as well we, i just created a with me where uh it's always a good idea to mention uh, how your class is supposed to work and um so that's the preview of the with me like we need php 8 or newer composer as well um for this um class to work and then uh, we also uh can mention that uh, they will have to create an account on openai so an account on um open ai and there we can just mention the link so it will be beta.openai.com perfect and that's it Okay, so I have done actually some uh, cleanup and refactoring in the project I will show it to you. Um, so let's open uh, this project. The first visible uh, change is obviously the architecture. I don't know if you remember, but it was provider before and I decided to have API because I think it makes more sense. When I was adding the readme, um, we saw just previously, um, I have noticed actually that it was a bit weird to, um, in the, in the snippet, in the example code to have provider because we only use one provider. This library is about open AI and nothing else. So why would we have different providers? No, we won't. So that's why I moved, uh, I renamed provider to API. The second one is actually there was two parameters here, two arguments, and we don't need two. We just need one, which is a private key. And then we will just um, um, use a uh, gozzle current here. And after we will return a uh, gozzle current, as you can see here. Second, uh, pluggable. Uh, I think pluggable is better than uh, providable or provider whatsoever. So the interface, the name is now pluggable. We plug actually the um, OpenAI. Then third is about uh, the private key. Uh, we were checking if it was a string here. We were doing a string. However, the parameter is here, as you can see, with the PHP, um, PHP 
type declaration, it's only it can only be null or string. So obviously it's gonna be a string. So this one was redundant uh, is string because it can only be a string or null. So that's why I changed to uh, just check if the length of the string is has to be at least one uh, one character. So one um, yeah, only one character for the string, at least one, otherwise it will throw an exception and that's the, that's, that one is the exception. The exception. And then what else I did in, uh, so in open IA API, it's a bit different because we didn't have that file before we had open AI. And in open AI, we had constants. And now I created the open AI API and in there we have enumeration the um, PHP 8.1 feature so um, enumeration is really powerful so I added the URL version and content type before we had it as a constant here in OpenAI we had like um, we had uh, API URL um, API version and so on. Now it has, it's, uh, add, it's added as an enumeration and with PHP to have the value of the um, enumeration you have, you cannot just do this like a constant, you have to use value. So you have value and name. Name is the name of the enumeration, so it's that one, and the value will be the value. So that's the name, that's the value. So for us it has to be um, it has to be the value, so it has to be like this. Uh, and um, and then finally, I have added some unit tests. So as you can see here, I, I mocked actually. I use fake uh, uh, fake. Sorry, I use fake for that. So fake is a really good library to to mock um, classes and also um, like. We don't want, you know, when we mock, it's nice because if we didn't mock here, uh, we would have a uh, code Gozo account with a URL of OpenAI. But what if OpenAI is, um, is not available when we run our test? We don't want to, to have our test failing only if the remote OpenAI is not available. And also it will make our test slower because we will call a external resource so that's why we are mocking it and as you can see here we do the same we check if get count um, is um, return goes all count uh, an instance of goes all count and if it's the case it works so in my case i added in composer.json i added a custom script to just be able to do composer um, test. So we don't have to, um, to do vendor bin PHP unit. We can directly do composer uh, test, or we can even do a composer run test. It's up to you. But composer test works as well. And let's see if our test is running. Yes, they are. I will just check uh, when I have to charge my, or oh, sooner we have to charge my laptop. So now I have, um, I will show you, I have a repository. Um, I will go to my repositories here on my GitHub. You can do the same if you wish. Um, and uh, where it is, I have that one here. So that's my repo. Uh, I have already added the, the remote, so now I just need to do a git push. So let's try. I will do because I committed all those changes, uh, and that's just an example, uh, an example file actually. So uh, and we don't want to commit to that one. Um, apparently, I didn't finish a commit in the state. I'll just do um, update composer.json. I will just have a look what was inside. And it show. 
what was the div? Oh, I think it's just the indentation. Okay, so I can change the message to be more explicit. Um, uh, change change composer.json indentation perfect and here as a prefix I will just do clean up oh yeah no I can leave it as it is and now I do git push and it will actually push all the code in our repo in the main branch so now we can see ta -da, it's in there amazing and now we can have a look on the repository um, for uh, the action. We can see actually, because I also added a GitHub test. This is a continuous integration GitHub action, which trigger um, the PHP unit test. So we are running the test every time we uh, push or, or we have a pull request opened on our repository. However, it's failing right now. So let's have a look why, what's the reason, and here it is. That's the reason the job was not set up because the payment has failed. Oh, okay, this is new. Apparently, um, yes, it's, um, it's not free and uh, this is funny. Um, I don't know. I have no idea what's the limit. So maybe it works. Normally it should work because the tests are passing and um, the composer check. This one should also be working on, on our local. You can also do those steps manually. You see this works. And if I uh, run this one, it should also pass. Yes, so there's no reason it doesn't pass. It's just that uh, GitHub actions are free, but there's actually uh, a limit. So the limit is um, as soon as you set zero dollars, um, two gigabytes. So uh, I can even have a look if you are interested in my account. It's in settings and then building plan. Let's have a look. Um, I will go to settings and I will go to building. I hope, no, I don't have personal information here. Uh, and um, what I did here, as you can see, um, actions, I have probably used everything. Um, Quota in six days, average repo, perfect. Um, yeah, I think I have used something a bit too much. But anyway, so this is not the main tutorial. So let's go back here. And um, yes, so everything looks fine for now. You can also create a first release as well. And we can publish it on, uh, on packages after. So we can already um, go to packages here. Um, and um, here I will do version um, v1.0.0. I will create the tag v1.0.0 and I will call it release. Um, it will be uh, 21st Feb 21st. 2022 release. Perfect. That's the name. Um, release awesome. I will just add an emoji because I think it's nice to celebrate it. And I publish it. And after we can log in to, um, to packages. So we are going to submit it. And let's copy the link. So you just go here, clone, and you copy here, you see. Uh, or oh, actually, it will be HTTPS. You copy this one, you go there, you paste here, you see, that's it, and check. 
Oh, hmm. I think I know why actually, and probably also why the the billing payment for the actions didn't work. It's because it's a private repo, and that's a problem. I will set it as a public repo, and we won't have that issue anymore. You simply go to public, and then you have to copy paste uh, and to confirm here. Beautiful, awesome. Now it's public. So let's see again for the action. If I run it again, I believe it should work by now. How do I rerun it? Um, <laughs> um, I'm not too sure to be honest. Or maybe I should just maybe on the next um, pull request. So one test. Mm, there should be a function to run it again, but to be honest, I not too sure. Anyways, let's uh, focus on publishing it first on packagist. We do check. Yes, awesome. It's found now. So we do submit, and here it is. It submitted, so now I should uh, pick up the first version 1.0 um, version here. Um, I will actually still say still in beta and not and hasn't been completed yet because it doesn't implement everything from OpenAI and hasn't been com uh, completed yet, uh, hasn't been fully, let's say. Beautiful, I will uh, update this and now let's refresh and you see it's the version um, V1.0.0. So amazing, and we can see we require uh, PHP version 8.1, which we want. We see the dev uh, dependencies are fake and PHP units, and the main dependency is causal, which is the case. And we can see this is our readme, and uh, and yeah, everything looks um, looks fine. So well done. I'm really happy that we have done this together. And let's see in another video. Ciao.